I learned AAA testing back in 2006 at Microsoft. It has nothing to do with AAA games. It stands for Arrange, Act, Assert, and it's a way to structure your test to be incredibly clear. I've written thousands of test cases since and tried many different things, but this structure has continuously shown clear value. I'll also be adding some features in how I organize the files and test names in unit tests with it. If those are part of some named pattern, I'm unaware of it, so I'll just lump it all together here. In this example, we see arrange, act, and assert as three comments dividing a test function. In arrange, we set up the vacuum. The code, that, the code we'll be talking to will generally need some initialization. So this is where we configure the state of the test case's world. Specifically, here we set up an instance of the class and establish an expected value to be used at several other points. Sometimes there will be no expected value. Sometimes the setup or expected results will be more complicated. In act, we generally have just one call, the function we are actually testing. The test case name implies that if we give right value a number, that the value will be set to that number. We're specifically testing right value. Assert is about validating the expected results. There is actually a test class in NUnit or Unity test specifically called assert. Here we are asserting that two values are equal. First, we pass in the expected value, then we pass in the actual value. Finally, we pass in a message that explains in no unclear terms how the test failed if the two values are not equal. I cannot overstress how important clarity is in test cases. When it fails, you want a clear understanding of exactly what you are testing and what it should have done. This brings us to names. While the function name is present to discuss, I want to step back to the class and assembly name. Here we see devious.test patterns as a project or assembly name. Despite test in the name, this is not the unit tests. This code I'm using to demonstrate this is freely available on GitHub at the following link. But the assembly name is devious test pattern. So when we look at the project that tests it, the names match up. Devious test pattern becomes devious test patterns dot tests. Same assembly name, but calling out that it is the testing version of it. The next key item is the class itself. The class we're testing is simple function. So our test class is called simple function tests. And generally speaking, the functions inside begin with the name of the function we are testing, followed by an underscore such as write value underscore. Sometimes we're testing the constructor, so I might start with constructor underscore or some other thing. But generally, it is the function or property in specific that we are testing. So back to the test case. We are testing the write value function. It is the part, it is the first part of what is called out in the name and also the one line we're using in ACT. After what we are testing, we post the conditions for it, which is what a range is taken care of. The final part of the function says set value to that number. It is effectively the assert value of the test case. So we are setting the value to that number, and we are asserting that the number it stored was what we expected. In this example, we're testing the initial state. So no functions were called, no properties were set, and basically we combine arrange and act together. In fact, we could have gone further by using in parentheses new simple function, close the parentheses, dot value instead and put this whole thing in one line. In cases like these, the format doesn't matter too much because there's so little going on. A key piece of advice is never write a test case that depends on another test case having been completed first. Order of test cases is not generally guaranteed, and each test case should be isolated, running its own instances of values. While you could store fields in the class to maintain state between test cases, that just increases the likelihood of false test results as the complexity of your test case extends beyond a single method. Lastly, you can create helper classes and functions that establish commonly repeated setups or validations for your test cases. In some cases, this is highly important, but the more you have to set up, the more likely your code will not be set up well for test automation. 
I'm planning two more videos in specific that are highly valuable to extend your knowledge. The first is on the Unity test attribute, which simulates frames for component testing to get mono behaviors validated. validated. And also MOQ, mock, which allows you to stub interface replacements so you can simulate the state of the rest of the subject's world. The latter of the two is where the architectural complexity identification really stands out. 